So I'm starting a disc brake conversion for my Impala, and I picked up this is a these are complete spindle setups uh, I got from a guy off Craigslist. These are off of a 70 Impala. Uh, from what I understand, it's a complete bolt-in unit, so just brake loose the uh, ball joints and drop these in, and good to go. Hook up the brake lines. Uh, so I guess they've been sitting in the back of a pickup in Arizona for about five years, he said, and. Now he's just like, well, I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to go a different direction. He was going to put them on his, I think it was a 60 C10 pickup. Anyways, um, obviously they need a little bit of work. Uh, they're all rusted out. I'm going to, I think this, even the caliper that's rusted all the way down in there, I think it's pretty much shot. But it's a, it's a good starting point, I guess, just with the spindle at least. I mean, this is still spinning pretty good, so I think that's all right. Hopefully the other one is. It's, uh, it's rusted solid on the caliper. That looks beautiful, doesn't it? But anyways, um, I started, I just grabbed my Milwaukee Impact and I pulled these caliper bolts just right out, no problem at all. They aren't even rusted on the inside at all, so shows a little bit of promise for me at least. Um, so I'm gonna try to get this, uh, these completely rebuilt and ready to just drop onto my car. Uh, get into more detail of it then. I think this is all pretty straightforward just to rebuild in these, but then uh, I'll get into more detail once I do get it switched over to the car with the master cylinder rework and finding the right, um, I guess, procedure to find the right uh, ram for that master cylinder and get the right size for that. So anyways, I'll get to work on it. So I wasn't going to do a video on this, but um, after doing a little bit of research, trying to go up to the parts store and get new rotors, I found out that they don't make the rotors anymore because what GM used to do was make the rotors and hub as a single unit assembly so um, they don't actually make the rotors anymore so a couple different options you can use a c3 corvette rear rotor and that'll work or if you go on rock auto i believe it's part number one two zero six ah i'd have to double check i'll get the number for you i'm gonna order them um but they're the four piston uh, four, four piston caliper rotors. Those four piston caliper rotors are actually nearly identical. Uh, the difference being why they're called out differently is because the hub was different because there's a different size uh, bearing for the spindle. So the rotor itself is the same. So that's, I think it was an option for 67 to 70 impalas. So 69 and 70 impalas, can't get the rotor. But if you use the four piston, four piston caliper rotors you can get the, that rotor and that'll fit right on so um, if you are replacing the rotors basically what you got to do is start with uh, pressing out the wheel studs so I uh, have one pressed out right here you just you press for me this is rusted on there this came out of a junkyard and it was cheap so I'm gonna try to keep it cheap this way but um, yeah Needs work. I'm gonna have to hit that with a hammer and maybe try to break it free. But um, I'll go through this just to because it seems like it's not a very common thing for people to do this. Uh, change rotors on their 6970 Impala. They just apparently just keep using the same ones or something. All right, so here's my rotor. Um, this is the disc brake spindle. Uh, if you see, if you look closely, you'll see it fits in there. That's a press fit. Oh shit. Press fit on this line right here. And then there are also the um, wheel studs pressed in. So it's a total press fit altogether. Um, I was pounding on it for a little bit. I couldn't figure out how they came apart. So I used a rubber mallet. There it goes. So it's not as difficult as I thought it was initially. So uh, yeah. Quick little tidbit. I bought a new washer, nut, and pin, cotter pin there, for the spindle, but the auto parts store failed me for sure. Uh, this doesn't fit. So, I mean, if you look at this, not even close to the same size. The reason I bought one is because it looks like this washer had spun. Looking at the spindle, the spindle was in good shape still, so it's more like this washer spun once around or something and then caught and stayed there so um 
I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna weld the tab so that it has one and stick it back, the old one back on. All right, so I welded my tab onto my washer here, and now I'm setting the bearings on this. Like I said, new bearings all the way around. So basically, the way you do this, it's a lot easier if you actually have these mounted on your car already, or if you have a second person or a vice or something, you can do it not in the car and have this ready to go for you, which is what I'm doing. So um, what I got here, uh, you tighten this bearing down, or this nut here on the bearing, as you turn the wheel, preferably in the forward direction, which I just did backwards because this is the left side. So turn this like, like so as you tighten down the nut. So you're tightening down the nut to set the bearing. So you're trying to simulate the max amount of bend or whatnot that you put on the bearing, the uh, load on the bearing um, that you would get from normal wear. So uh, as you're turning this, you're tightening it down until your hub basically stops turning. And at that point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen it up and then finger tighten it. And you'll notice that you'll be able to tighten it right, it only takes about a half turn to back it off. And then you tighten it right back down to finger tight. And then I think the spec is to back it off to the next um, slot. What I like to say is you go that extra, it's like a sixth of the turn farther uh, to the next one. At most a sixth of the turn. Um, probably less because there's a, there's a cross slot in here. So there's four, um, or what I'm trying to say, there's two slots all the way through that you can use, I guess, it's more like this. But use the next one after you get it tightened down finger tight. So that's where we're going right now. Okay, so here's where I'm at with the, uh, I just pinched my finger by the way, that sucks. Uh, with the bearing, when I turn it, it stops. If like, there's nothing else, you could go maybe a little bit more, it's kind of tough to do that. Just check it after another 500 miles and call it good. But basically now that I have it tightened, I'm going to back this off. And then tighten her back down. Again, in the direction that's going to turn finger tight. And you look at where you're at. So I'm right here. If I'm not lined up perfectly straight, which I'm not, the hole is right here. So that means the next one's going to be coming up right over here. I'm going to turn it. Sorry, I'm going to turn it just a little bit farther. Put the pin in, and that's all I need. Okay, so I have my hub fully assembled. I got my rotor on it. Um, next, I come over here to my caliper, which I did just buy brand new. You can rebuild these or get a remanufactured one, but they do make them brand new. Like I said, I bought them from a company off of eBay. Took a couple different manufacturers to find one that they had in stock. Otherwise, there's like a two month lead time. Able to find it, somebody had it in stock right away. So, got this, new brake pads for it. Uh, just one thing to point out, I did get new hardware right away with the bolts. These are new. Um, slides here, whatever you, I'm not sure on the proper terminology for that, but they are free. Before you put it, the calipers on, you need to make sure that you push these bushings all the way back out, otherwise, they're not going to fit into the slots on here. But then you just stick your new brake pads on and make sure everything's clean, ready to go, and you should be able to just slide the caliper right onto your rotor there. So, so Caliper, like I said, it's pretty doggone easy if you get it on there good. Once you get your brake pads in, so just get this lined up. Bolts will go right in. The threads will actually go onto this backing plate right here. Um, so you're going to tighten down between the socket head, the bushing bushing will be the tightening point between the backing plate and this bolt head right here and then the caliper will be able to free float back and forth because it's only a one piston deal so it needs to be able to free float so they can apply equal pressure on both sides of the hub or rotor sorry and I'm just doing these back and forth just to make sure I get it tight evenly not really a big deal if you don't do it tight but I'm just uh, doing it just in case because that's what I'm used to doing Now, when you switch these over, the brake hose that you used on the drum brakes is actually the exact same one that you come with right here. It's upside down. 
That's a clip. So the brake hose that you use on your drum brakes will actually go right onto there. Uh, no problem, it'll, it'll screw right in. So I'm gonna just reuse that since I already replaced that. And so I'm gonna go take that off the car now and put that on here. And then that way when I get this put onto the car, I'll be able to just throw that hose right in. Like it's just an easy transition just uh, from, as far as the spindles go, from uh, drum to disc. And so uh, I did the first side here and now I'm putting together the other side, so I'll kind of go through walking, walk through that a little bit. Uh, I already have a video about wheel bearings, and I have a video about how to do uh, brake pads, but I'll kind of walk through it anyways because it's a little bit different than normal because that rotor's on the back side. Um, see, I got my stuff kind of pulled apart. Got my uh, spindle off. That's a drum spindle, so I'm completely changing up the spindle. This is complete bolt-in type assembly so uh, basically all I'm gonna do is I put this together and then I throw it on so the spindles will bolt on and then I'm changing out my master cylinder adding a proportional valve and hopefully it's just all gonna go really smooth when I go to break apart that block right down there uh, you can see there's just a one lead out from the master cylinder um, right here goes down to the block and then it splits three ways to um, two to the front and one to the rear. So um, it's kind of different when they went from drums, but uh, so I got a two plane master cylinder with a proportioning valve on it. So that'll be a little bit different. I bought some different parts for it. So I'm trying to make this as easy as possible, quick and simple, so I, I can still drive my car out of here today. So I tried to get everything, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so we got our spindles put on here. Uh, I did end up stripping out a bolt, or sorry, a nut on the tie rod for the driver's side, but besides that, all went well there. As you can see, we just barely have enough clearance. I got 15 inch wheels. That was what was standard in 1970, so it works out. Um, so yeah, that went well. Uh, basically, I just popped off the uh, upper lower ball joints, the, the uh, tie rod, and took off the uh, brake line, of course and then everything just uh went right back into place um on the lower ball joint there i just used a jack right underneath um, the lower control arm here got the other tire going back on uh, i'm going to drop the car back down on the ground uh, change out the master cylinder plumb a few lines and hopefully it won't be it'll only be one more trip to the parts store and i should have it all figured out so shouldn't be too bad all right, so I got to a little bit of a panic and kind of just rushed, finished this, forgot to take video of it. But anyways, the car is together. Um, so this master cylinder here uh, is from Summit Racing. The part number is SSB-0401. And this is a, a directly bolted into the 66 Impala here. It was a, the push rod was the exact same length, bolt pattern was the same uh, as my standard uh, just that single chamber design that's right here. So I never even changed the push rod Didn't have to do anything. It was super easy now that granted this is like the $90 version But for the simplicity, I'd say it's well worth it um, There are $40 versions out there. Um, I don't know if they're supposed to work or not This is the non power brakes one that could be the difference in the price there, too Because I don't have power brakes But then I bought this proportioning valve also off of summit racing uh, part number CLP PV 2. Now, they say that you're supposed to uh, buy the bleeder tool where you're going to disconnect this brake light switch right here and put this bleeder tool in so you can bleed it out. I didn't do that. It worked. It, if you read into it a little bit more, as long as you're at low pressure, it will bleed through. So, if you're lightly pressing the pedal, you're going to bleed it through. So, uh, that, that's what worked for me. Uh, I also pre-bled this out uh, when it was sitting on the bench. Just filled it up with fluid, took, the, uh, took an old, uh, I took the boot off the back, took uh, the back end of a ratchet and just pushed it through. Tried to get as much air bubbles as I can. I made a mess, but I think it made it easier for us in the long run here. Now, 
uh, you can see it's kind of a mess. Um, so what I had on the for the brakes on here before, this is a quarter inch line for the rears right here, and a seven sixteenths um, by twenty thread on it. And so I just got a seven sixteenths union and a seven sixteenths to nine sixteenths for the rear. Um, uh, 9 16 by 18 threaded um, flare nut there and just adapted that right to the back of the proportioning valve right there and then both of the fronts are 3 8 lines now I just got some of the longer ones that I had because I didn't want it to come up short and so then you see this ugly mess but it's connected and it works um, for the driver's side I took if you look closely I can't see it with the light but anyways, I took the line, still can't see it, and put it directly down to the brake, uh, brake hose. So I came from here on the bottom of the proportioning valve, and this goes directly through the wheel opening here of the uh, wheel well, and it goes direct, directly to the brake hose. I took out that, there's like a six inch line in there that comes down to the bottom. Just replaced that all together so instead of having an extra fitting, I just have one line there. And then on the passenger side instead of rerunning that uh, just the union nut there and then that menagerie of brake line connects right there so it took a little bit just to bleed the brakes and but that worked um, I just I didn't use a brake bleeder I used a second person just you know they press the brakes and you open it and then you close it they release the brakes do it again and again and again um, and then after about two or three times you're gonna run out of air bubbles have them sit there and pump the brakes five, ten times as hard as they can, and then that should push some air bubbles through. Bleed it once or twice, have them pump ten times, bleed it once or twice, pump ten times, and just make sure in that process that you're keeping refilling the master cylinder so that you don't start sucking air in because then you have to go, going to have to restart the whole process, and that's not fun. But um, all in all, the brakes are installed now. The only thing that's out of whack is my alignment. I thought that the 70 Impala spindle was going to be perfect fit for the 66 and it's not. It does bolt in perfectly but the tie rods are going to need adjusted. I believe that the uh, uh, camber, I believe is the right word, uh, is correct on it but the definitely need to readjust my just my tie rods so uh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm just going to do it with a string <laughs> from, the, from the rear to the front and get it as close as I can and then take it to, I guess, take it to somebody and see if they can't get it any better because I think my camber is, it was off before. So not that this made it any different. I think it's the exact same as it was, but it's a little bit off now that the springs that I replaced have sank a little bit more. So um, all in all, I think... Tomorrow I'll have this done. I still have to pick up my mess. I have stuff just littered everywhere. But um, all in all, it did take me about eight to ten hours and four trips to the auto parts store. But uh, if you come as well prepared as you can, um, hopefully with the knowledge that I'm giving you, you can get a little bit better um, just with uh, preparation wise of what parts to get. But um, yeah the big part was just uh getting the spindles rebuilt and then once those were installed the master cylinder part actually came really easy because i got the right one it just bolts right in proportioning valve it works fine i did order a kit from summit to go for these two brake lines here to the proportioning valve from the master cylinder one of them was bent backwards so i had to make my own there i called them up they were going to send me one right away. I told them just to refund it, and so they did. So, props to Summit there. But all in all, the brake install is complete. I just need to do a realignment, and then we're going to be off and running again.